So tell me about the Center for Dietary Supplements. What kind of work do you do? Well, I'm responsible for assuring the safety of dietary supplements, uh, responsible for monitoring adverse events related to dietary supplements, and also assuring that dietary supplements are manufactured using good ma manufacturing practice. Now, the FDA doesn't regulate di dietary supplements from the very beginning, right? That's correct. Uh, there isn't a pre-market review of dietary supplements. Although all dietary supplements that are marketed must be safe, uh, the onus is on the manufacturer to assure that dietary supplements are safe. Now, uh, if FDA does identify a problem, that is uh, through the literature or through adverse event reports, then we can take action against those supplements, and uh, we have done that several times. So what's a dietary supplement? Well, a dietary supplement is uh, several things. Uh, it can be a vitamin, mineral, an herb, a botanical, uh, protein. There are many, many forms of dietary supplements. So since we don't monitor them pre-marketing, uh, do you ever sort of go into the dietary supplement store and get some off the shelf and just do spot checks? Well, not routinely. Generally, when we go into a uh, sampling product, uh, we have an issue that we're looking for. For instance, uh, we did do a, a large sampling of vitamins that are uh, used by women of childbearing age, and we specifically were looking for lead levels because we're concerned about lead that would be consumed by uh, women during pregnancy. Uh, adulteration and, and, and other things that you find in adverse events, um, it's gotten a lot of publicity recently. Uh, talk a little bit about, about uh, what you've been doing and how you're protecting the public as yeah. best you can. Well, there are various forms of adulteration and contamination of dietary supplements. Uh, one area that we're quite concerned about is where a drug is specifically added to a dietary supplement. Uh, and then uh, touted for its drug effects, even though they label it as a dietary supplement. For instance, they may add a drug to a weight loss product that may be a diuretic that might help you lose weight very quickly, but in fact it's a drug. It might be a, a stimulant that's added that also helps you lose weight. Uh, there are also uh, male potency enhancement products that could have uh, specific drugs that are used for erectile dysfunction. All of those are unapproved drugs and should not be in those dietary supplements. So we do monitor for those kinds of adulterants. The other concern we have is the use of uh, steroids in dietary supplements. These are used primarily to enhance performance. And uh, some of these steroids are uh, uh, could possibly be called dietary supplements, but uh, most of the ones we see, we believe, are really drugs. And so uh, the consumer really has to be very careful if they see that a product says it has a, di a steroid. Uh, our general advice is to avoid it. So you also take a look at how these products are marketed. Yes, uh, part of our review is to see what kind of claims are made on the package. So if a, if a product is claiming to basically affect the structure and function of the body uh, without making specific treatment, that is uh, disease treatment claims, that would be considered an appropriate type of claim. But if it starts to go into the, to the treatment of a disease, that is it's saying, you know, you can take this to prevent you from having H1N1, um, infection or uh, to protect you from uh, the common cold, uh, that's not a structure function claim. You've now entered the drug arena. And, it, and I guess that what you do is controversial. I would say so, yes. Uh, well, controversial in that we have a lot of products that are in the marketplace and those products make a, a broad range of claims. So. It's very, you know, it, it's always a changing market. And uh, the other thing that happens is the internet is constantly advertising and manipulating claims so that uh, products that uh, may, uh, based 
purely on the package seem to be no problem could end up be to be sold on the internet with a lot of claims that are really not acceptable. So we're having to monitor the whole internet, the international internet for claims, and then we have to look at the actual container. And what does it say on the container? It's quite a, quite a challenge. So what's the future look like for this kind of regulation? I guess it just becomes harder and harder as, as the ways to advertise these drugs uh, grows. Well, um, I'm somewhat optimistic on that. We do have some new regulations. Uh, about two years ago, we, we implemented uh, good manufacturing practice regulations for dietary supplements that we believe uh, will uh, assure the public that what's on the label is actually what's in the bottle. And that's an important step forward. Well, it's, it's, in, the company's, it's in the industry's best interest to have good product out there and not, not to have a problem because as we've seen in, in, in foods and some of the other things, you know, a couple of bad actors can, uh, can spell real ill for an entire industry. Yes, and, and I think the industry realizes that and, and they have embraced the new GMPs and, uh, and the Adverse Event Reporting Act and uh, I think everyone thinks that this could improve the safety of the uh, dietary supplements and give the dietary supplement industry a better name. So you're, you're a collaborator as well as a police person. That's a good way to put it. I mean, I, I, I guess you could say that I'm collaborating, then I'm trying to help industry to uh, improve the image of dietary supplements. Because people, people like, like them, uh, and, and, but also we have a public health uh, function and responsibility. That's right. Uh, you know, quite a few people take dietary supplements, whether it's just a vitamin or a mineral, or it could be glucosamine, it could be, a, you know, all kinds of um, other products that are sold. A lot of people take them, so my job is to make sure they're safe, and when they pick up that bottle, it is what it says it is. It's that simple. So your job is to make it safe, and, but not necessarily efficacious. Well, there's no review of efficacy by FDA. That is not part of the act. And so the efficacy uh, has to be assured uh, by the company properly labeling their product. Uh, the company cannot make false statements. So if they say that a product can help you lose weight and can help you lose 10 pounds over the next two weeks, we, we feel that they have to have studies in their files that can support that. And if they don't, or if the FTC sees advertising that's not supported, then those claims have to be removed from the product. We've, we've seen that most recently with H1N1 with all the fraud and the stuff on the internet and, and those kinds of things. Yes, that's a very good example. Thank you. Thank you.